Reporting for Heart Rhythm TV, I'm Mahek Dandi, and I'm joined today by Dr. Joshua Silverstein, cardiac electrophysiologist at Allegheny Health Network, and Dr. Jennifer Wright, cardiac electrophysiologist and associate professor of medicine, University of Wisconsin. A very warm welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here. Um, now, Dr. Deering had done an interview with Dr. Tung where they kind of scratched the surface of Cardi Q, which is the topic of discussion for us today. So we'll delve a little bit deeper into what Cardi Q is and what its implications are uh, for our EP community and our patients. So let me start with you, Dr. Wright. Uh, what benefits does Cardi Q offer to the community of EP providers in the US and really across the world? Thank you so much for that question. And I don't know if we have enough time to answer that in this short interview, but because I think there's a ton of benefit for the EP community and for the community beyond EP. So this is going to be a centralized, and I say going to be, it is already up and live, a centralized repository for all things QI. It's going to enable us to all work together to share what we have done locally to expand that to other institutions who may be looking at similar pathways and or ways to improve the care of our patients. And we're starting with atrial fibrillation. And because it's hard to be a provider in healthcare and avoid patients with atrial fibrillation, this is going to be a great tool for people, not only who are working in electrophysiology, but in all sorts of spheres in healthcare. Fantastic. It sounds like a great initiative and, and we're eager to see as, as more features roll out uh, the full impact uh, of this initiative. Uh, Dr. Silverstein, how uh, do you think, in your opinion, could a QI initiative uh, like CardiQ impact care delivery? And more importantly, how could it build trust in a healthcare system? Um, that's a great question. Um, so the, the CardiQ network, to me, it offers um, you know materials that you can't find anywhere else on the internet. And that right now, you know, if you're trying to find protocols for atrial fibrillation or workflows or um, algorithms to help improve care uh, for patients, we're often all um, creating them on our own and repeating the same work in different institutions. And this is an opportunity for us to all share what we've done and to help improve care across all, you know, all the uh, different healthcare systems. Um, and so I think uh, by doing that, we can focus our attention towards the patients and improving the, the care that they receive and building the trust in them. Absolutely. And we often talk about, you know, with, with the advent of value-based care versus fee-for-service model where, uh, you know, different health systems might be incentivized by different monetary uh, uh, incentives. Uh, this initiative really would, would span that entire breadth of no matter what your reimbursement model is, you can still put patient care uh, at the forefront and, and really bring value in addition to that, to the healthcare system. Absolutely. You know, I, I think that uh, quality improvement um, benefits everybody. It benefits, number one, the patient. Um, it benefits the, the clinician um, by streamlining operations, eliminating waste. Um, and because of that, it also um, helps physicians, whether you're in a value-based system or if you're in a fee-for-service. Um, you know, one of the, the areas we've collected a lot of um, useful information on is improving lab efficiencies. And by doing that, it improves access of care to patients. So instead of having a three month wait for your AFib ablation, we can cut that down to a one month wait, um, less ER visits, um, more timely care. Um, and then that obviously also helps the physician who's in a fee for service model. If you're able to get more patients into the lab, uh, it will be better for you and your team. Sounds like an absolute win-win and uh, lab efficiency and cutting down time to ablations, music to all EP providers ears, I'm sure. Um, and uh, going back to you, Dr. Wright, from an academic standpoint, uh, you know, with, with care for AFib moving more towards individualized, personalized AFib management, how do you see a collaborative kind of standard of care effort like CARDI-Q uh, fitting in with that more personalized care model for AFib? Yeah, thanks for this question. I think it's um, an integral part of what we're doing in academic medicine and beyond. And so it, just looking at from an academic perspective, we have a lot of learners within our system. So they have been a huge part of our process, like going to what Josh was saying about EP lab efficiency. They've been a huge part of our process in helping to build our EP lab efficiency and improving quality of care by certain processes that have improved, you know, our streamlined and efficient practice 
practice throughout our lab uh, sphere. And then going beyond that, I think that um, the collaboration involved has been super important. I'll just say an example. One of the collaborative efforts that we did locally at UW was to develop an AFib management algorithm in the endoscopy suite. So that was a collaboration with our ED providers, our um, GI providers, anesthesia, et cetera, so that we could develop a protocol that would work and would be amenable to all providers it part of the practice. And it we found that, that of course that it did help our patients. It it decreased um, the amount of procedures being canceled for those patients coming in for their endoscopy and it also decreased their ED visits. So that was just one example that we did here locally that was a collaborative effort involving um, you know not only cardiology and electrophysiology, but also um, other divisions and departments. Excellent, excellent. It's a really illustrative example of of really the potential of this type of an initiative. And I I do remember a lot of the consults coming in from endoscopy suite. A patient comes in there and AFib, hey, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. So really great work. And um, the last question is for both of you. Uh, looking ahead, you know, with perhaps some examples, uh, how how might providers use CARDI-Q? I guess, Dr. Wright, you already touched upon that, uh, not just for EP, but other divisions as well. And how might they contribute to this initiative uh, over time as more features roll out in the future? Um, first of all, uh, I'll take a stab at this. Um, I, I'd like to thank um, those who've already contributed because there's been, there are a lot of um, people. Mm -hmm. And Jen was talking about that, you know, we, we have students in our um in, in the collaboration, um, it's the steering group um, that have gone through all the materials and helped um, you know, make sure they're appropriate for the website. And um, I'd like to, to, to thank the steering group and also the curation working group, which you know, consists of over 50 people that have already contributed to, uh, to this website. Um, but going forward, um, you remember this is version one. We're really proud of it. We think it's great, but it's, it's only gonna get better. And what we need for it to get better is feedback. Um, so if you see something that needs to be improved, please reach out to either Jen, myself, or um, to um, Tracy Blythe or, or Anne, Anne Marie Smith, um, and we can make changes to the platform going forward. Um, and then, of course, the, we need more materials. And this ranges from uh, protocols, uh, workflows, you know, um, even lectures um, we're collecting and putting on this things that you can't find anywhere on the internet that you mm -hmm. think would be helpful to others in the community. Um, those are the sorts of materials we're looking for. Yeah, th that's exactly right. And I, I will reiterate that we need everybody's involvement in this. And so we've been very fortunate that a lot of people have contributed already. And it's great to see the work that's been done. But again, this is version one, and we're, we're looking ahead already to version two, three, and four. And, and that's going to be a result of everybody's collaborative effort. And again, not just electrophysiology, but everybody involved in AFib care. Perfect, perfect. And we will link the address to the Cardi Q website as it as it stands and, and uh, add some of the resources uh, along with our, our YouTube video here. And, uh, you know, this has been a really informative uh, conversation about Cardi Q. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Silverstein, Dr. Wright, for joining us. This is certainly an exciting uh, venture. It has immense potential for patient care impact as well as adding value to health systems. So complete win-win uh, to get behind. Uh, and and, uh, you know, we wish you the best. We'll certainly circle back and talk about the progress that's been made in version two and version three and so on and so forth. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. And to our viewers, stay tuned for more EP news from the cutting edge right here on Heart Rhythm TV. Thanks for watching. <laughs>